Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Welcome back to my channel, Inside the Hem. I feel like I don't have a ton to show for all the sewing that I did in February. When I did my February plans video, I said <laughs> February is a short month with only 28 days, yet somehow I managed to list off probably 18,000 things that I wanted to make in February. <laughs> And I only got a few things done, but I sewed almost every single day. And what I do have, I am really proud of. So there are a couple of positives hidden within all of that. So it's probably going to be a pretty short <laughs> makes video. Um, and I'm kind of okay with that. Um, if you saw my plans video for March that I just posted, um, then you know, like, I've got some good, clean, decisive ideas for March. And so I'm really excited about what I'll be able to make next month. But looking to the past in February, only a few things and that's okay. Um, okay, so the first thing is so my style. So my style for February was a choice between the Rumana coat from By Hand London, I believe, or the Estelle Ponty jacket from Style Arc. Romana was never going to happen for me. <laughs> I knew that. There are a bunch of people who made both. More power to you. But I don't really wear full length wool coats and I just didn't have the energy to put into a coat right now because um, I just didn't know why I was going to wear it again and if I were to make it I would crop it and there was like a whole lot of details involved in doing that and I just was I just was never really in the mood to make the Romana. Although the people that did make them they look fantastic. I mean the Romana coat is a legit serious well designed beautiful coat pattern. So if coats are your thing go check out the Romana. But for me it was all about the Estelle literally. I printed, taped, printed the pattern, taped it together, cut out the fabric, and sewed it two, two and a half hours. It was super, super, super fast. All right, and here she is. This is my Estelle. It doesn't look like much, just kind of like hanging like this. Um, I put some pictures of it on my Instagram, so I'll put those, I'll insert those in here so you can see what it looks like on me. Um, but basically, it is just Ponty fabric. Um, sewn together with this waterfall style um, opening in the front and then the, the only tricky part about the Estelle is working up this neckline because the shoulder seam, the back neck seam into the other shoulder seam all ends up being one long seam. Um, so that was a little bit tricky if you were a beginner sewer I could see how you would be like what? Um, but Maddie made this, did a sew along so there's lots of resources out there if you want to see how to put it together properly. Um, but the reason why it comes together so quick is because there's a center back seam then there's this shoulder slash neck seam and then there's the sleeves and that's it. Um, it's not hemmed. Some people did opt to use their cover stitch folding it over um, and originally I was going to do that but I didn't have cone thread that matched this well enough. The one I used for my serger is like a little bit brighter than the fabric and I just didn't want something on the outside of it that didn't match perfectly. But to be honest with you, after I've sewn it and worn it, I don't know that I'm going to go back and and um, cover stitch the front. I think it's kind of cool how it's a raw edge. I might do something with like the edges that end where the um, where the um, the what is this called? <laughs> the center back seam surge at the collar and at the hem. I might do something with that. I'm not even exactly sure what. But you know, other than that, I'm kind of fine with it being raw edged. The fabric itself came from Fabric Mart Fabrics. Are you guys tired of me talking about how awesome Julie's Picks is yet? If you haven't gone to get your Julie's Picks, um, membership yet you guys you really really have to it's awesome so this did not come in the catalog with all the different swatches but 
every month they are sending out like an exclusive exclusive fabric opportunity I don't even know what to call it just to the Julie's Picks members before they open it up to everyone else and in like the beginning of February they sent out um, a whole new collection of rayon ponties that they got in and this blush pink was one of them and immediately I ran there um well not physically but I, <laughs> I ran to my computer and typed it all in really fast and um got to purchase enough of this for the for the Estelle um so I'm really excited with it I love the color um, I've already been able to find several different ways to wear this pink and I think that it's just going to be a just a staple um, in the spring but also because it is that muted like dusty blush color it's going to be really great for fall too. It goes really well with like light colors that you wear in the spring like white and like a light blue um, but it also goes really well with those like deeper um, fall colors like burgundy and olive and darker blue like navy and stuff like that so I think this is going to be really really versatile in those two seasons where you know a lightweight jacket is I need that like in the morning and night usually um so yeah so I'm really excited about my Estelle okay the next item I don't have here to show you because I had to ship it off um Michelle from Stylemaker Fabrics is um, an exhibitor at the Sew Expo Stitchery, what is it called? It's like Stitchery and Sewing Expo in Wallyup, Washington, which is near where she lives. Um, it's kind of like a local um, sewing conference um, with tons of classes and this huge expo floor. And so she asked a handful of us to help her with her um display this year um so she picked some fabrics that she had she paired them with the pattern that she wanted us to sew and then we got to pick which one we wanted to sew up so for whatever reason when she sent out all that information i was like mia i was like i had no idea any of it any of it went out and by the time i got on there everybody had picked like all my favorite things and all that was left were like a tote bag a hoodie and then this which I kind of felt like it was fate I kind of felt like yes this was meant to be mine because it, it would have been one of my top picks anyways um, and I was kind of surprised that it was still left and no one had chosen it but it utilized my favorite fabric ever rayon chalet um, and it's I have this swatch of the fabric left um, you can tell it's kind of like a lime green I wanted she had two colorways shoot was the other one like a burgundy type I can't remember um but I chose the lime green gray it's like it's light gray and then this charcoal gray and it is like a grungy plaid kind of um when you look at like a really big swatch of it but it has these huge horizontal lime stripes and then these black long or charcoal stripes with it too and with it I made a Charlie caftan the maxi length version with the side slits um, and the version that had that inset which by the way <laughs> was a little less than simple um, I think it would have been easier to do if it weren't in such a shifty fabric but um, if you are attempting that pattern you need to be in a good place of zen, peace, happiness, calm, and balance because that inset is a little bit tricky. The corners of it are tricky and then if you do the um, so on the outside actually on the outside it was fine it, that was no big deal it was whenever I went to like you do this funky way of lining that piece to cover all of the raw edges on the inside which necessary totally um to get like a really professional inside to be honest with you though if I had known what I know now I might have just surged those raw edges on the inside and not tried to encase them at all I think it still would have looked really nice 
Oh, but it's um interfaced, so that wouldn't have looked... I don't know what I would have done. I am not 100% like proud that that is what is being showcased as my work. I hope people recognize how tricky that was and that what I ended up with looks really good considering what it was. Um, but it is there in Washington. I shipped it all the way across the country um, and on display at Sew Expo. So I'm going to try and get some, I have a few pictures of it here that I sent to Michelle before I sent it um, in the mail. Um, and I'm going to try and get some extra pictures from her with it all displayed. She has these mannequins. My mannequin has like this cute little pose where this leg, like an Angelina Jolie moment to show the slit in it, which I think is really cute. So um, I know I'm going to wear the pattern or the dress a ton um, once I get it back. Um, it's just going to be perfect for Charleston with some sandals and maybe a cute little hat and like a, you know, basket woven um, a handbag. I think it's going to be really, really cute. And I love that I went for the green and not the more safe version. I really, really love this lime green. If this is available on her website or when it becomes available, I will put it a link in the description box. I'm not sure if it's up now. She's kind of in the process of adding a bunch of her spring fabric. So I don't know for sure if this is on the site or maybe if it's a expo exclusive like only available there i'm not 100 percent sure what's happening um but as you know her fabrics are always really great quality and this is not an exception this is this is wonderful i really loved working with it so sorry i don't have it to show you here but i did make it so it's going in the video <laughs> and the reason why i only have oh I almost forgot. This dress that's in the background here is my refashion for February. This was originally this giant muumuu. You might remember it from my plans video. Um, shapeless. It only had like two horizontal like pleats in it. Um, big shapeless short sleeves. I want to say it had a um, scoop neck and I made that out of it. Um, which is Butterick. 6319. I didn't have any real strong feelings toward this pattern whenever I first opened it, but now I am in love and I have a second one planned already. This is a great little fit and flare pattern. Um, super simple to construct. I want to say I cut it, sewed it, everything in one afternoon. So call it four or five hours. As I've said before, the beauty of refashions is you don't have to hem anything, <laughs> which is great. So the hem there was like the natural hem from the skirt that I bought for the dress that I bought. And then I just cut into a, um, a princess seam bodice, cut that band, and then whatever was left, like the I took the length of the center front and the center back, started at the hem, and just made a rectangle basically out of that and just cinched in with those two box pleats in the front, two box pleats in the back, and voila, done. Um, so the skirt is not technically the skirt pattern, the skirt from the pattern. Um, it's just the width that I had from the refashion. So, you know, when you're working with something that's already made, you kind of have to make some adjustments on the fly, which is kind of what I love about refashioning is it's not so like, predictable and cut and dry. You kind of have to be a little bit creative and use some critical thinking. So that's super cute. I love the color. At first I was like, this is pretty bright. I mean, it is like a bubblegum pink, <laughs> but I think it's really cute. It does look really good on my skin tone. I know it's not for everyone, um, but I wore it yesterday with like a little navy, like cropped jacket um, and gold jewelry. And it was really cute. I felt really good in it all day. It's linen which is also great. Um, so I, that was a really great find at the good old Goodwill. <laughs> so I was happy to find that, happy to make it. It's a $3, all in $3 garment, which is just, I mean, for linen, 100% linen, that's, that's pretty good, as you guys know. So refashion is one of my makes. Okay, so the reason why there might only be one, two, three garments that I sewed up in February is because I got a little 
distracted. Um, I did mention this in my February plans video, but I just did not account for how detailed and involved and precise that this was going to be. I do have something to show for it and I'm really excited about where it's going. Um, but it is my Vogue 4448, 4888, shoot, which one is it? Fours and eights, hold on. 8884. Okay. <laughs> I was close. Vogue 8884 trench coat. Here's what I have to show for it. It is this, which doesn't look like much, I understand, to all of you, but this has been hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of sewing. Um, I opted to do a piping along the center front which will look like that i piped the little pockets i piped the collar i put a little quote on the inside like embroidered for lack of a better term um there's like a few my uh brother has a few stitches that do lettering so i did that um and i have a black lining i have black round acrylic buckles for the well there's no sleeves on here um the sleeves have like a little band with a with a buckle and then the belt has a buckle did i say black buttons already black buttons so i'm at the point now where i just have to attach the sleeve like the sleeve is completely done um there's like top stitching on like t double top stitching almost like you see on jeans on two of the back seams as well as the front the two front or I guess four front princess seams um, the sleeve has the top stitching um, and then the addition of the piping just creates like a lot of extra time and energy and detail and precision um, to make one garment but I really 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 love it I think it's going to be superb um probably one of my best makes ever if i can continue to just take my time slow and steady there's no rush um kind of what i've been doing is br i broke it up into parts and like i come in here and i'll spend like an hour on it and then i'll put it away and work on something else because i just don't want to get too overwhelmed or too rushed or too excited or too anything i just want it to be perfect um so yeah, I'm super excited about it. I have been vlogging along the way. Um, I've never done this before, so I don't know exactly how it's going to come together, if it's going to make any sense. I mean, it's basically like, as I am working on different parts, I've just been kind of turning on the camera and saying, here's what I did and here's how I did this. So there's lots of tips kind of mixed in with that certainly lots of information about the fabric and the interfacing and all the different things that I'm using including like sewing feet and different stuff like that so there's a lot of information there I just don't know how it's going to be once I edit all of that together if it's just going to be like really confusing or if it's going to kind of naturally tell the arc of what it was like to make the jacket if it will make sense because it's it is chronological in how you would make something. I don't know, so we'll see. Um, I am gonna edit it and post it, don't worry about that. Um, I'm just not sure what the feedback is going to be like. But but anyway, so there is that. So if you're curious about anything about this jacket, rest assured, all of your questions will be answered one way or another. Um, but yeah, this is it. So I'm super excited. And I still have a lot of work to do, so this will carry over into March. But again, it's like a little bit at a time um, mixed in with all the other plans that I have for March um, will be this. But I did want to show it in my makes video because, I mean, it's pretty darn awesome. <laughs> and I have made something. I have stitched things together, even though it's not complete. Um, so, and it is the reason why I have so few other things finished this month, which is totally fine. I got everything done that I needed to get done. Um, my, I stayed on track with my Sew My Style, which was great. I stayed on track with my monthly refashion, which was great. And I got a little extra 
dress done to help out a friend, which is also great. Um, so that is what I have made in February. And I'd like to see what you have made. So if you have a vlog or a blog or an Instagram or whatever that features some of your makes, leave it in the comments so that I can find your make on the interwebs somewhere. Um, I love seeing what you guys have made. I find it as a source of inspiration and also motivation. So um, even if you don't have any pictures of it, just tell me about it. Tell me what you've made um, in February. Brag on yourself. We all deserve a little bit of that. So um, I can't wait to see what you have been working on. And I will keep you guys posted on everything that I'm making. I do post rather frequently to Instagram and Facebook. Um, so if you're not following me on any of the social networks, please do so. I'm at Inside the Hem everywhere. It should be pretty easy to find. Links are also in the description box. So you can go down there and find me there. Um, otherwise, I will see you all in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.